Hello, and welcome to Rock Your Blog. This is the 100th taping, and today's segment of First Home Alliance. I am the host, Larry Laws. I am here to share with you the amazing services that First Home Alliance provide in the community, empower you with the knowledge to enhance your financial fitness, and answer any questions you may have about housing to make your dream of homeownership a success. On today's episode, we have a special guest. She is multi-talented and wears many hats. She works for Washington, D.C. Public Schools, a business owner, and served as treasurer on the First Home Alliance Board of Directors. Please welcome to our show, Shauna Goldman. Hello, everyone. Yes, Shauna. Shauna, well, thank you for coming on the show today. And uh, I'm very proud to have you here for the 100th taping of Rock Your Block. And uh, that is uh, it's an amazing day, and it's a good way to celebrate by bringing someone on like you with all the talents that you have. Uh, just tell our audience a little bit about what you do. Um, well, once again, my name is Shauna Davy Goldman, and I am, I wear several hats, as you mentioned, Larry. Um, one of the many hats that I do wear is for First Home Alliance, I am the treasurer. And what that involves pretty much is to make sure that a lot of the, the budget and the finances for the organization is taken care of. Um, I go in and make sure I meet with yourself as the executive director and make sure that the information that needs to be done for like taxes and audited are taken place. That information is usually um, shared with the board or other board members. They can review it, submit any questions or concerns that they may have, and then we'll move forward from there. Yes. And Shauna, you've been on the board for a while. I mean, yes, that, I have. Yes. How long have you been on the board? First I've been on the board life? since 2011. So we're talking about four plus years now. And um, I love being a board member. I have learned so many different things from a lot of the members that's been on the board. Um, there's a lot of people that come from different walks of lives, come with so many different experiences, education, and background. So that's one of the many reasons why I chose to be a board member for First Home Alliance. Yes. And so uh, would, do, it have, do you have to have any certain talents? So what prompt at you to uh, work on a volunteer board? Um, certain talents, um, I will say yes and no. Um, I think it's just a love for um, volunteering and serving the community, a love for people and trying to give back. And I think that's one of the many reasons why I chose to be a part of the board. Um, in terms of education and background experiences, not necessarily. Once again, if you have that experience in working with people and want to give back, I would always recommend for people just to reach out to First Home Alliance and see how they can be a part of this wonderful experience. Yes, and how many board members are on the board at this time? Currently we have seven board members. Um, we are always looking for new members to be a part. Um, you can join by reaching out to myself or yourself <laughs> and get more information of how to be a part of it. Um, we're looking for lawyers, teachers, you know, um, any anyone that wants to be involved in the community and wants to give um, time. Yes. Now, and how much time commitment is that required? Well, it really depends. Um, I, I know everyone has their own family responsibilities and personal responsibilities. For myself, I dedicate at least five to ten hours a month, and it really depends from month to month. So, um, you know, if you have one hour a month that you can give back, I'll always say that's the best opportunity for you to do is just to come out and say, hey, do you guys have anything for me to do? Mm -hmm. You can volunteer your time by making phone calls to maybe, um, you know, members out in the community, or you can come to one of our different fairs or any other community activities that we have. So there's, you know, the, the amount of time really depends on the in individual person. Yes. Now, there's a lot of nonprofits in this area. Yes, there is. And uh, there's a lot of uh, different uh, missions. Mm -hmm. And so what about this mission uh, calls you to want to serve? I think I mentioned it before. I think it's just the love for giving back to the community. Um, individual families and individual members in the community, they need a lot of help, especially around housing matters and financial um, responsibilities. So I think just sitting back and looking at the place that I was, where I was in my early 20s and knowing that I needed a lot of those information, educational information about finances and how to move forward in terms of buying a house. Am I ready to buy a home? Am yes. I not ready to buy a home? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how much to save, what am I spending my funds on? And I think when you do look at the mission for First Home Alliance, you see that they're empowering 
um, members of the community in terms of what they need to do. So if we do ever end up in another financial crisis, they won't be the one that's in that because they already have that information to move them forward. Yes, and uh, back to the board members, and we was talking about the board and serving on the board. Um, uh, do, do you have meetings, and how many meetings do you uh, attend? We do hold meetings. Um, there are several meetings throughout the year. Um, there's two annual meetings, and then it's every other month or every quarter, I should say, mm -hmm. where we come together. If we can't come together as a team, we'll do conferences. Okay. There's a there's one guy that's in um, Georgia, and then other other people are local, so like Maryland and Virginia area. So we do call in, or we'll do like a Skype where you know you can see the other person on the on the computer, and from there we just go through all the different things, all the you know all the positives and the other upcoming details that's happening in the organization. Yes, okay. And so um, I did uh, understand you're the treasurer, you, uh, you work on the finance committee. Yes, There's a couple other committees that, uh, well two that I you do. chair. Uh, one of them is fundraising, is that fundraising, correct? Fundraising, yes. Yes, uh, what do you do there? Fundraising is a very big part of First Home Alliance. Um, because we're a nonprofit organization, it requires for us to raise funds. Yes. <laughs> and um, part of my job is to go out in the community and um, talk to local business owners and reach out to them to ask them to, to give back to us. Um, from that, we can do a lot of different things. We do um, fairs. We also do appreciation um, meetings. Um, recently, we did um, a appreciation event where we we did a park event where we had Zumba, dancing, food, music. You know, children coming out and doing um, a lot of activities with families. Um, and from there, we raise a, a nice amount of money where we can put aside and say, okay, we can use this towards, you know, different things within our organization that we may not have, you know, the means to use if we didn't have individuals in our community to donate. Okay. And um, the fundraising, I know it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. It is a challenge, well. <laughs> yes. You know, and, uh, you can't raise enough no. uh, uh, funds. Um, and then uh, later on in the fall, there is uh, another uh, event that you hold uh, for the nonprofit uh, you put together, uh, the open house. Yeah, so yes. we do do an open house. It's somewhat similar to almost like the volunteer appreciation that we've, did, we've done in April. But the open house is more of giving everyone in the community an opportunity or new clients and members that are part of the organization just to come in and to see um, who we are as an yes. organization. And a lot of times, the, the voice on the other end of the, vo the phone, you actually don't get an opportunity to meet that person. Yes. So you come in and, well, the individual will come in or with their families, and they'll get an opportunity at that time just to meet that individual person, just to see who have been helping them along the way. And also just to talk to others in the organization about what else is offered. So during the fall, it's a great time for us to say, okay, these are the different things that we have done up to this point, and these are other things that are coming up. So if you wanna be a part of it, here's the opportunity for you to sign up and move forward. Yes, now before the uh, financial and ha slash housing crisis happened in uh, the late uh, 2008, uh, we actually had a, a, a couple of gala. Yes, we, we did. Gala events, and actually you was a part of that, putting that together. And so um, I know the talk, speaking with the board, that's something we want to move towards. And uh, with that, uh, in 2008, uh, the other committee that you work, uh, we were able to do something for the community in reference to one of the high school students, uh, which is the scholarship committee. Scholarship committee. And so uh, give us a little information on that. The scholarship committee is, I want to say, my, <laughs> my baby. The, the big thing that I am really, really striving towards for us to start start doing a lot more of, um, again, um, as you mentioned, because of the, the crisis in 2008, we're not really getting the funds in to actually help a high school student. Um, before the crisis, we, we had the ability to give one high school student $1,000 that went towards either their tuition or books, whatever they needed it for. Um, so we're looking forward to doing that again soon. Um, the only issue with that is that if we're not getting those donations and if we're not getting the big fundraisers to help with you know, putting that scholarship 
pocket of money aside, unfortunately, we're not able to give that money to a student that is, that's deserving. But definitely, there's something that we're looking forward to starting up again in 2016. Um, you know, and if there's anyone out there that can help or would like to contact me in terms of how we can, you know, make this um, an event or yes. what events that we can do to help raise money for the scholarship, I'll be glad to talk to them to learn more about how we can do this. Yes, well that's great. Um, we're gonna uh, continue to talk about the, uh, uh, some of the other things that you do uh, with the, the nonprofit. Uh, we're about to cut, take a short break right now. But before I go, I would like to remind you that First Home Alliance is a HUD-approved housing counseling agency uh, serving the national capital area. If you are a first-time home buyer, a homeowner, in need of mortgage assistance, I encourage you to check the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development website for a HUD-approved agency in your area. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. I would like to share with you information on free financial education classes offered by First Home Alliance and encourage you to register and attend. Our class topics include setting your financial goals, managing your money, paying yourself first, restoring credit, establishing and maintaining good credit, identifying and understanding net worth, and most importantly, obtaining your financial fitness goals. First Home Alliance is a not-for-profit, HUD-approved housing counseling agency serving Northern Virginia and the National Capital Area. You can also find other HUD-approved agencies in your area that provide housing counseling services free of charge by searching the HUD website at www.hud.gov. Please don't forget about our free home buyer classes held every third Saturday of each month. We'll be right back after the break on more financial planning. Welcome back. You're watching Rock Your Block, the 100th taping of Rock Your Block. I'm your host, Larry Laws, on the segment of First Home Alliance, here with our special guest, Shana Goldman. Shana, before we went on the break, you was telling us about the, some of the things that you was doing with First Home Alliance. Yes. And what I wanted to get to is uh, additional to fundraising, uh, scholarship committee, finance, you actually come out and participate in some of our training. Um, uh, one is our first time home buyer workshop. And uh, what are the areas you cover there? And uh, give me some of your qualifications that why that allow you to come in and help us. Another hat that I wear here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> one of the many, many hats. Um, with the VHDA course, I, um, I usually go in and I work on the personal finance portion of it and also the real estate portion. It is a six hour course for, um, for individuals that are looking to purchase a home and they may not have the enough knowledge about what they're going to embark on. So it's usually recommended either by their real estate agent or by their bank of, you know, look for some nonprofit organization and if they're, you know, providing these VHD courses. When they do come, as I mentioned, I do do the personal finance, so it's one of the, um, the many different portions of the six hour course that I take care of where I talk about different things that individual needs to know about their finances themselves. For example, um, how much do you have saved up to purchase a home? Um, what does it look like for a rainy day for you? Um, looking at a spending plan or a budget, or some people may use it as, um, what do you spend in every day or a month, monthly? Um, are you are you tweaking different things within your finances where you're feeling that you need to not use that anymore? For example, if you go to 7-Eleven buy a honey bun right. on a daily basis, you can take those things out and put that honey bun money now towards the purchase of a home. So that's just some of the different things that we talk about in the personal finances portion of it that um, an indiv individual need to know. In terms of like the real estate portion, once again, it's more of looking at the big picture of, okay, what are the different steps that you need to take when you're going in and purchasing a home? Do you have your home inspector? Do you have, um, 
do you do you know how to find a realtor and so on and so forth so some of those different pieces that an individual really and truly needs to know before they go out and say okay I do want to purchase a home and a lot of times when they do walk away they feel a sense of relief of wow I did not know this or yes. I knew this but the information was a little different so it's a very very helpful course that we guide them along the way through yes and we're all we're always uh, seeking other professionals real estate professionals uh, whether in the lending real estate home inspectors mm -hmm. closing to come in and uh, help with that class but by using the VHDA curriculum uh, there's a training requirement yes. and so could you tell us about the train the trainer it's the train the trainer program as you just mentioned um, it is a um, a course that runs through pretty much what are the different things as the presenter that we need to do for individual that will be taking the this course okay. so um, it is I I want to say it's two and a half, three hours, or it may end up being a little longer than that. Um, and it's usually every year, every other year that we have to go through and get recertified. So it's a very, um, it's a very detailed course in terms of what we need to do. What are some of the things that we should be saying and advising individuals on when they're sitting with us and when they're um, taking on these courses? Yes. Well, really appreciate you, you know, taking your time to come out for those courses, and I wish that we had more of a selection of um, a diversity of uh, real estate agents and uh, loan officers that would attend to actually come out and help us facilitate that. Yes, it's very, very helpful. Yes, and uh, just, um, we, we talked about the, the VHDA and uh, the training. Uh, we also have the financial literacy classes, and so there's a piece of the financial literacy it was per personal finance as well, and um, we appreciate you helping us with that as well. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Well, um, I want to go to the other hat, one of the other hats that you wear, which is a lot of. Yes. Uh, and uh, I know the work that you do at First Home Alliance is all volunteer. Yes, it is. And so with all this that you're doing, you wonder, um, how do you make your bread? How do I find the time? <laughs> yeah, how do you find the time? Yes. So what is your full-time job? Um, I am an instructional specialist for D.C. Public Schools. Um, a lot of people usually say, so are you a teacher? No, I'm not a teacher. I was a teacher, but I'm no longer a teacher in the classroom. However, I love the field of education. That is my upbringing, that is my life. I live and breathe education. So stepping out of the classroom took a lot for me, and that's why I end up back into this role of being in a classroom. But my sole purpose of being an instructional specialist is to work with teachers within the classroom okay. so they can better serve children. And so in some sense, I am still in the classroom, but it's not my classroom yes. anymore. Yes. So um, as a part of my role, a lot of different things that I do take on. Um, this upcoming school year, I'm actually switching roles just a tad bit where I'm going to be working with the autism population. That's actually, once again, my love. Um, special education is something that I went to school for, so I am really, really looking forward to um, taking on this new role and position. Um, as an instructional specialist, as I mentioned before, I go in and make sure that teachers are meeting the needs of the children, um, whether it's best practice or they're doing the curriculum to fidelity. A lot of times we feel that or we notice that teachers are not planning and they're not doing all the things that are best for children. So it is my job on a weekly basis to go into their classroom. We'll sit down like you and I are sitting now right now yes. and we'll discuss some of the different things that they're noticing or I have actually observed them doing and we'll just talk more about that. We'll we'll plan together. We'll I'll sit with them side by side. I'll model different things for them in their classroom. And from there, we'll develop a plan for the entire school year of what they need to carry out. Yes. Now, with this, you know, modeling, setting up models and actually working with teachers, you know, how do you measure that success? You know, when you actually have obtained something, how do you measure that? It's difficult. I want to say it, it's quantitative data, but unfortunately we cannot use quantitative data to measure their success. Um, my role is not evaluatory. 
they, they tend to get evaluation from their principal and a master educator. I am just a support system for them. Um, so with that, I don't go in and say, okay, I noticed that you are at a five in January. Now it's the end of the school year and you're at a 10. It's more of a qualitative data where we're going back and forth and saying, okay, now look at where you are, where you were in January. You weren't planning, and, or if you were planning, your plans weren't as detailed. Now yes. in June, it's very detailed. Anyone can come into your classroom and see or know the objective of what you're doing in your classroom. So, so in, on some, in some sense, it's really difficult to yes. measure success, but I think it's a more of a reflection, reflective process from that teacher to say, okay, I've actually seen growth with not only within myself, but also um, my children as well. Okay, and this information you know, that you gather are your reviews. I mean, who are you reporting this to? I'm actually reporting to a supervisor. So there is, <laughs> just like <laughs> we all have, yeah, I do have a supervisor. <laughs> okay. um, I report this information to the supervisor as well as the principal. Okay. So um, every time I go into the classroom, I have to write up a feedback form. That feedback form is shared with the principal, with the teacher, and also my supervisor. So everyone's on the same page about what what I did with that teacher in that particular session. Okay, and do any of this information get shared with the uh, board, the school board? No, it does not. Um, and from what I understand, it just stays within the school. So okay. this information is only among the teacher, myself, and the principal, and as I said, my supervisor. So it does not get shared with the school board. Now, whether or not they gathered all the teachers within the school collectively and share like different data or scores, they can do it that way. But the information that I'm working on or the pieces that I'm working on with a particular teacher is not shared beyond that. Okay, and uh, what brings you, I guess, satisfaction of, uh, you know, uh, maybe there is success, uh, maybe these uh, good reviews, you see some things. What, what uh, brings you satisfaction from that job? The smile on the children's faces. Um, we know what our what society we are living in right now, and I am actually a mother of a 17-year-old that's about to yes. head off to college. So, Congratulations. I, thank you. I can actually <laughs> breathe saying that. Um, and with that, as I mentioned before, my love for education. Um, I think what really and truly brings me satisfaction is to see a child come into the classroom with the love and joy for being in that classroom. They want to share their stories. They want to they want to succeed. You can see the joy on their face because oftentimes, especially in an urban community or school system, we don't know what their evening is like. A lot of the children, they don't have meals, they don't have a place to sleep and so forth. So just knowing that they came to school with maybe the clothes that they had on yesterday, but they still have that love for education brings a joy oh, that's to great. my heart. Yes. Now I remember you going back, uh, completing your graduate. Yes. And uh, and actually applying, but I forget how long it's been. How long have you been holding this in this position? I've been with DCPS for five years now. Yes. Okay. And so, is there a future there? A future in DCPS? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you plan on staying for a while? I am actually planning on staying for a while. Um, I think I'm giving it probably another year or two, as I mentioned with my daughter going off to college this, um, actually next month, a month from today. Yes. Um, I want to make sure that I put myself in a position of growth. So whether it may be DCPS, whether it may be Fairfax County, or maybe another state completely. But I think this is going to be you know, the, the path that I, I fulfill until retirement. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, uh, Sean, I really appreciate you coming on the 100th taping of the Rock Your Block. I am excited to yes. be here. And sharing all the great information with us. And I would like to invite you back, you know, and uh, talk about some of the other hats that you wear. That would be awesome, Larry. Okay, all thank right. you. Thank you. All right, Shana. Our guest today shared with us some of the amazing things she's doing in the community. Feel free to contact Shana if you have any questions. Now it's time to check out our inbox. This is where we share a question sent to us from our viewing audience in reference to housing, financial education. Today's question comes from Arlington. The viewers asked, what topics are covered in our first time home buyer workshop? Well, we covered, we answered some of those questions today, but the first, uh, first time home buyer workshop is held on the third Saturday of each month 
We, we do use the VHDA course curriculum. There's a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and a spending plan that accounts for two hours, and it must be completed prior to the class. In this class, we cover six major topics. We walk you step-by-step -step through the home buying process. We cover personal finance, which Shauna covered quite a bit today in reference to the finance. We talk about the spending plan and saying how much house you're comfortable with. We cover credit. In credit, we cover credit issues. We cover uh, the importance of credit, how credit has an impact on what interest rate you may have. And interest rate, of course, is what you're going to pay to borrow money. We cover mortgage. We, are, we cover the mortgage process, whether it's doing the mortgage loan application and working with a lawyer, uh, mortgage loan officer. We cover the role of the realtor or the role of the real estate agent, where how you build a relationship with the real estate agent, how to find a real estate agent. And also, we cover the importance of a home inspector. We, we act, this is a very good portion of the class where you bring a home inspector there that can share with you a lot of things about the structure of that building, which is a, a lot different from an appraisal. It covers the structure of the building. And then loans, uh, loan closing, where we have a closing uh, agent that walk you through the closing, the day prior to closing, the day of closing, and through the closing process. If you have questions about our class enrollment, or any questions concerning financial education or home ownership, email our inbox at help at firsthomealliance.org to get your questions answered. And tune in to our next show to see if your question was selected to be shared with our audience. If you want to find out more about our services, please visit our website. Thank you for watching Rock Your Block in today's segment of First Home Alliance. I'm your host, Larry Laws, reminding you that I'm here to empower you with knowledge to enhance your financial fitness and answer questions you may have about housing and to make your dream of home ownership a success. Flex Boot Camp is a pilot program. We are seeking applicants that are serious about getting into financial shape and willing to take on the financial literacy education experience challenge. We ask candidates for a 12 month commitment of financial management conditioning. We offer 10 financial education modules augmented by monthly confidential one-on-one -on -one financial coaching sessions. We are committed to help you reach your financial goal. Your success is our success. If you are interested, please visit our website for more information.